1966, a new sleek ferry makes its way through the Mediterranean, crisscrossing the Mediterranean from the French Riviera to the island of Corsica. Her name is Corse. But none of the passengers will expect that this ship's life will end in tragedy and a scandal that shocked Greece. In the 1960s, a line known as Compagnie Générale Transatlantique, aka the French Line, was nearing its end. After over a hundred years of ocean liner service between France and the New World, their company was dying. They expanded into a new field, ferries, with their first route going to Corsica, and so the company used their 100 plus years of nautical experience to design two ships, one named Comte de Nice and the other named Corse the name of the island of Corsica in French. They served on the route from Nice to Corsica and were popular on the route. However, after only three years, a subsidiary company was made to handle French ferries in the Mediterranean, known as Compagnie Générale trans -Mediterranean. After six years of this, the company then changed their name to SNCM. She sailed from France for her last time in 1982 and was sold to Stability Maritime. She was then renamed to Golden Virginia. She sailed on the route from Italy to Greece to Israel, a very long route. This continued until 1998 when she was sold to Minoan Flying Dolphins under their Hellas Ferries brand. After a large refit, she began operation between Paros and Piraeus in 1999, until disaster struck the very next year. She departed the port of Piraeus on the 26th of September 2000, with 473 passengers and 61 crew. At this point, the Semina was on her last legs. Greek safety laws said that due to the ship's age, she could only serve for one more year before joining the other ferries of her era in the scrapyards. She continued south before encountering rough seas. With the waves getting higher and the winds growing stronger, the crew deployed the stabilizers to lessen the rocking. However, the lights of Paros can now be seen. But then, out of the distance, some other lights can be seen. They grow closer, then, bang! The ship lurched to the left as she scraped alongside a rock, the gates of Paros. The ship groans loudly as she leans off the rock, she lurches to the right. Chaos breaks out in the hulls of the Semina as she begins to sink. But one thing is missing, crew. Some are getting lifeboats ready, but for themselves. Sound familiar? Passengers take action, holding doors open and, op and opening life jacket crates. Only five minutes afterwards, the main lights go out. Seconds later, emergency lights flicker on. A flare glows, illuminating the sky for a minute or two. It, it is also when the Greek Coast Guard vessels and private boats race to the site to try to save anyone. Lifeboats begin to lower and get away, but the list of the ship is becoming hard to cope with. Only some lifeboats are lowered. To accommodate for this, inflatable rafts are sent into the water, but are picked up by the wind and blown into the storm, never to be seen again. Many passengers are begin throwing themselves off the ship and into the water, without a life jacket. 22 minutes later, only three of the eight lifeboats are launched, but these will be the only ones. They are at the mercy of the storm until the private boats can make it to the site. Forty minutes after the ship hits the rocks, passengers sit on the side of the overturned hull. They wait on whether to swim or to wait for rescue on the side of the Semina. But at 11.02pm, the ship sinks under their feet, taking many passengers down with it. Finally, yachts and fishing boats arrive on the scene. But the wind blew the ship close to shore, so the three lifeboats and their survivors are also blown to shore after a few minutes of struggling in the water. This is also when the first body comes in, but it's dry. It's Dimitrios Malamas, a man who was helping coordinate the rescue efforts from the Port Authority office when he died of a heart attack. Still, boats are sent out to search for survivors, however, few are found. Some do wash ashore, but many either hit rocks or drown. 
Two hours after the Semina sinks, the last survivor is found. 81 people are dead, including the man who suffered a heart attack. As the survivors returned home and child-sized coffins were carried around the streets of Perikia, the investigation begins. But, as pressure increases on the company and the crew, the CEO of Hellas Ferries, Pandilas Sphinias, jumps out of his sixth-floor window, committing suicide, making the death toll 82. The investigation into the disaster ended up revealing a roller coaster of a story, so sit back. As the ship entered the Bay of Perikia, no one was on the bridge. While well, yes, the autopilot and the stabilizers were on, the autopilot does not change the course of a ship if winds move it. On top of that, the port stabilizer did not deploy, the ship's age causing this. It was pulled to the right, but some crew made their way onto the bridge and steered the ship to the left, but it was too late. But this should have not sunk the ship. The hole was above the waterline. Well, when the ship was about to hit the rocks, the stabilizer finally deployed. Then, when it hit the rock, it slammed into the side of the ship, cracking a hole right where the generator was. This caused the ship to lose power, and the crew left the watertight doors open. There was no way to close the watertight doors without electricity, so once the water reached the car deck, it was too late. After the sinking, many improvements were made to Greek safety standards. Ships over 30 years old are regulated more strictly, and all ships need to carry voyage data recorders. Minoan Flying Dolphins ended up getting rebranded and sold to another company, where it still operates fast ferries today as Hellenic Seaways. Passengers Heidi Hart and Christina Shannon were honored by the city of Seattle for saving two men in the water during the disaster. They were in their lifeboat when the other passengers were bickering, but some people swam up to the lifeboat, and so Heidi and Christina decided to help pull them out of the water, as the others argued. Today the wreck is an incredible shipwreck, right in Paros where it sank, and although the top has collapsed, the most incredible part is that the front bridge has fallen completely off where it once stood, which is pretty incredible to look at. The view is pretty nice, and there's also definitely a lot to see. Unlike most shipwrecks where you don't know where the heck you are because it's so blurry, you can see a lot in this shipwreck, and although yes it is a tomb, it's pretty incredible and I would still recommend going there if you're ever in Greece. The Semina disaster still looms large over the island of Paros. Today, it isn't really well talked about. But it's important not to forget this disaster. It was really interesting to research, and I would recommend watching the Mayday documentary on the Semina. So, will the wreck of the Semina ever get raised? Will anyone ever start talking about this ship again? And what diving certificate do I need to go to see the wreck? That's a very good question.